welcome. Uh, new faces that I have never seen before. Um, no, a lot of people are here from the previous talk. Um, thank you. Um, so today's second talk is going to be instrumenting the Wolfram language, as I was saying in the previous talk. Um, there's going to be a lot of assumed knowledge about code tools that I, I won't be getting into necessarily, but um, there's a lot of cool stuff that I just want to be able to show. So I might be skimming over um, all, of, all of the basics. Um, yeah, the goals today are to show profiling, code coverage, and debugging Wolfram language code. So um, what does instrumentation mean? No. Well, it's a new package that I've been working on automates the instrumentation of Wolfram language code, common software engineering tasks, such as profiling code coverage. So profiling is what I'm, you know, the collecting of timing information about running code, um, coverage, collecting information about whether the code you have runs or not, or, you know, how many times it actually runs, um, get some information about that. And of course, debugging is being able to look at running code and observe its state. So, all right. Let's just get to it. Um, yep, I know that also has dynamics, although still probably doesn't matter. Um, right, play it safe and just quit. Um, just load this. A lot of this is like boilerplate stuff, but I will be showing the results of running. Um, a lot of this stuff gets written to temporary directories being thrown around, so kind of just bear with me. This is the first actually interesting function, profile instrument. This is the thing that says, you know, take the code, the original code and instrument it. So I just ran that. So we can see what, um, what it did. So this is the original, let's see if I can probably blow that up. It's probably ish, good. Um, and that's the original code. And go, okay, good, it stayed blown up, blue, blue, blown up. Um, this is the instrumented code. So you can see a lot of stuff's been added to it, you know, whatever this is, uh, whatever these, you know, yeah. So basically the same code though. It didn't do anything else other than add that instrumentation. Okay, so then let's add the, let's, let's load the instrumented code. Well, let's assume the code that I was starting with was correct. So we're not, yeah. Um, so, you know, needs just works. So there's a special evaluate, wrap it around the code you actually wanna run. Uh, you know, we get a result, cool. Okay, so there's something, some object that you wanna post process because it can be very, 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 very large uh, depending on what you do. Um, and then let's just get a report about what just happened. So, what this, my, that might be too much, yeah, better. Um, so what this, what this is, it's reporting on the timing information of the code that I just ran and has a lot of information. You'll notice it has file uh, and line number of the function. So very, very, very useful number of, you know, different columns, uh, number of calls, how many microseconds itself took and what percentage across all of you know, each function's um, time added together. Uh, this is the most interesting <laughs> column probably for you trying to figure out what the bottlenecks for things are um, per call and self plus children timing. But, you know, this is the, the column that most people are gonna be interested in. Um, looks like there might be a bottleneck in the dummy function one function. And so um, if you look at the, you know, implementation of dummy one. Oh, I forgot I left a pause statement in there and that's why everything is so slow. So um, almost as if this was an example to be shown. Yeah. So, but this is arbitrary code that's running and it has been the the, the package, I've been iteratively, iteratively improving it for, for a long time now. Um, recently added support for go to and loop or go to and label. Um, if you still need to be using that, I didn't like doing it, but I did, um, you know, just in the name of better support for everything. So the, the goal is to be able to support art, you know, instrumenting arbitrary code. So, um, yeah, so that's profiling. I'm just going to close that. Any quick questions just about profiling stuff? Yep. And maybe, 
That's an interesting question. Yeah. Don't know yet. That's a good, yeah, it's a good, you're going to have to not think about that right now. Yeah. Um, it, yeah, I need to not think about that. Yes. Yeah. I think I <laughs> I'm not going to think of, no, yeah. 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 So this whole thing about writing temporary files is really cumbersome. And so the next step is, you know, do we have some kind of representation for code like that's already been loaded in the kernel that I could probably instruct? Yes, we do. Strangely, we're like a language that I can just look at down values and instrument that. And so that's the next step. If you already, even your code is already loaded, it can still be instrumented in, in theory. Um, but it's very slow going and, you know, all these temper, it's harder to look at, you know, inspect down values than, uh, than, than the files themselves. And so it is a goal. Yeah, definitely to be able to do that. There was someone over here. Yes. Well, I don't do anything on the left-hand side. There, there, there hasn't been anything that's needed that yet. So um, knock on wood, but yes, um, I have no doubt that there is some kind of way of calling the code um, that, you know, not trying to break it on purpose, but yeah, that, that may, but it hasn't been an issue yet. So, and there, there was somebody else. Yeah. So you're saying, did you say alpha code? I see. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, we definitely could work towards having something on the on the actual server side. Um, again, good. I have to not think about. I have to think. I have not think about that right now because that's also very interesting to think about. Yes. Yeah. That's yes, yes, yes. Uh, for things that aren't deterministic in the timing, could you do something like timing? Could. Could and probably should. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it just does the one right now, but um, yeah, that, that would probably be easier to add. Yep. Cool. All right. I'm going to move on for code coverage. Um, it's going to be very similar looking. I not, I don't know, uh, play it safe again. Uh, similar stuff. Okay, and then coverage instrument. So what did that do? Well, what that did was create, well, you, you've already seen the original code. Um, if it's created this instrumented code with coverage information. And what that means is saying, I'm inside this function. I've, inst I've instrumented this line of code. I've instrumented this line of code, you know, various things. Um, I'm adding compound expressions. And so returning things like sequence is now annoying. So you now have to do things like, I don't want to think about that even right now. Um, so yeah, so this is a little bit different, but more the same. And so if we proceed with looking at what we have here, and I think I did quit. So I think this is actually using the coverage version. Um, yeah, cool. So process that, process that. There's a baseline and a um, runtime you know, data. It, it, you basically have to combine the two. So what this, now I'm gonna dump out to the command line. Um, this uses a lot of tooling that people might be familiar with for like called LCOV. And I'm not going to get into what it does right now, but I believe I'm in 
coverage. I think I can just, okay. Um, yeah, Alcov, combine that. Oh, look, I have my 83 and 80%. Oh, that's that's interesting. What is that? Let's let's look at generate some HTML and look at that. Um, hey, look at that. So uh, those two commands just generated this HTML and I dug down, actually I generated this and you have to click through, but that's fine. There's only one file. Um, oh, interesting. You know, I, I ran the stuff that I ran, evaluated this function 70 times, 41 times, 41. It didn't do this one at all. Oh, because I overwrote that one later. It's like, oh, this is just dead code. Oh, I can just remove that. Oh, cool. I found, you know, I'll, I don't know if you call that a bug or not, but I found something that I want to fix with my code. That's pretty cool. Um, and then if I did that, these would both go to 100, obviously. Um, and that's, that's what you would like to improve the quality of your code, knowing that your tests cover as much as you can of your code that you have. So um, that's a very similar thing. Yep. Did you have a, yep. Yeah. How will this work across? Um, yeah. I mean, you'll get results for things that are instrumented and you won't get results for things that aren't in instrumented. Um, it's perfectly fine to mix the two. It's just, you know, regular code that's still running. So, okay. yep. Well, that isn't, I mean, you're, that's still a problem. I mean, right. you, you, yeah. Um, well, I mean, you'd know if none of your code ran, I mean, in that sense, but yeah, I mean, that's more of a, that's some other kind of system that should be finding that problem. Yeah, um, definitely a problem. Obviously people have, um, you know, run into that all the time. Um, yeah. I don't know. I don't, I don't know about this specifically, but but similar things should be able to solve that too, or you know, work towards solving that. So, yeah. So that's code coverage. Um, all right. Yep. Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. Running in loading this and running collapse one is going to be different thing than writing this and having collapse one at the end and running the whole file. Like for example. Begin is not like package import, it's like actually doing some in evaluation. So, do you take that into account when you say 100% coverage or not? Well, yeah. So, there are, we can look, um, there are things that are not even instrumented as baseline. And you can see, you know, so that there's no, oh, I'm not even, <laughs> that's the original. Um, the, the, like the begin and begin package statements are just not instrumented, okay. you know. I, you know, it's a choice. I could, and then you'd see the one, the one time they were, you know, run because they are commit. You know, that that is code that runs. Um, it's just a thing that I've, you know, it's not useful to see that. But you could, it could be there, and you could just see the one because it was loaded the one time. And you know, if you saw anything other than one, maybe like scratch your head about why you're seeing something. Right now, but like tracking down packet loading. Maybe not in this specific case, but in some other cases, might be useful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, I, yeah, there should be maybe a, a quality set or a, yeah, perform, um, quality goal, whatever it is, a set, performance goal setting. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's all controllable. So very much in flux. So I will take all suggestions that people have for the, you're fixing up this kind of thing. Was there another? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's just what files, what lines, how many times, you know, you could, um, that's a lot more data because it's keeping track of you entered this function, entered this function, entered this function. It's like a timeline um, that then, you know, gets processed after the fact and, you know, entered, 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 and then exited, exited, exited. And I mean, you could, you could mess with it if you wanted to, um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's pretty heavy, heavy weight. Um, so, but yeah, I mean, it's it's not, you know, untenable. Sure, sure, yeah. Well, so what the, the suggestion would be in your code, well, I guess it depends if you didn't want to modify your code, then yeah. But the idea is to be able to have comments 
say, you know, don't instrument the thing under this or don't instrument this block of code, you know, kind of thing. Not everyone, yeah, it, it, exactly. So you don't need to see everything all the time. So, yep. Um, all right, so yeah, I was gonna move then to debugging, similar kind of thing. Um, buh, 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 buh. So start VS Code. Let me actually kill VS Code. And then I think I need to install a brand new debug version because I installed the thing from the marketplace. So I believe that's installed now. Okay. Um, start VS Code. Um, go to my sample workspace. Don't save, that's fine. Um, okay, so this is an example of a very basic program. All of these little red dots are breakpoints. Oh, good, it helpfully says breakpoint, that's good. Um, and so I think if you give it a sec, oh, there's just no problem. Um, code analysis and everything's running here, but that's not what I'm showing. So VS Code has on the left-hand side also a run and debug menu, and so, this is like, this is a program. I can run this, right? And just debug it in this instrumented code. And I could show that later, but it's in some temporary directory right now. But it's similar to the stuff that I was showing before. Takes, takes a second or two for the, this external, like another kernel to start up, but give it a few seconds. Oh, I'm, I'm online. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. So maybe if I, I hit continue. So up here, you can see VS Code has like this little interface. Um, so what that does is jump down to line 16 because that's where the next breakpoint is um, after starting. Oh, you know, I'm, I'm stuck. I'm stopped there. Like, okay, that's that's kind of interesting. Um, the next breakpoint is in line 20, and I've entered a module. You can see variables are seen. Oh, those are the local modules that I have here. They're not set yet. Um, kind of random looking. Let's go to the next one. Oh, C C is now set. D is now set, but I'm now in a function call that if I go back up the stack frame, you can see D, oh, D's not actually set, never mind, sorry. But um, and now I'm inside foo, I'm calling, you know, so here's, here's the parameters and variables. Let's just keep going. I forget actually how long I have to do this a couple of times, but you can see the stack growing. There are different variables being assigned and changing as things flow. And then, yeah, finally, so then, okay, yeah, then, then we're back where we started. D finally has a value. Um, and if I, and then there's nothing else, and then it just kind of ends unceremoniously. But anyway, so what this is using is another protocol called a debug adapter protocol that's similar to a language server protocol uh, published by Microsoft again on their, and their, their flagship product uh, is, is using it. Um, but it basically has the promise of if you give it a debugger, which is the, the, the hurdle you have to get over to begin with, they can give you the graphical user interface for this. And so the thinking is that the style of instrumenting code that I've been showing is very, very appropriate for, for instrumenting, um, doing what would be needed for um, debugging. You could imagine you know, something saying breakpoint you know, these are breakpoints. This is very similar to what the debug stuff is doing uh, somewhere in some temper directory somewhere. Um, but, you know, stopping at functions and just turning this into, you know, this was a very dumb straight line program, not very interesting, but, um, you know, adding more to this as needed um, has, has great promise. And I want to um, continue with this. So yeah, all, all through instrumenting uh, Wolfram language code. And so again, like I was talking about uh, instrumenting down values, I go, oh, could I just start, I could just start just in time debugging code even, you know, already loaded code, you know, the, debugging the down values and you just start thinking about the potential. And um, I think it's very exciting to be able to, um, you know, explore and, and do all of this in the name of, better better code quality for for wolfram language so any other questions all right well thank you very much